Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I'd like to say, you know, risk management is a critical function for any business or financial institution in this country. And assessing risk can become even more challenging if financial regulators institute practices that are unpredictable and carry compliance measures that are costly or misguided. The practice of de-risking has damaging effects on Main Street America and causes uh, financial institutions to terminate long-lasting business relationships if they might be deemed high risk. Operation Choke Point is one of the many examples of executive overreach from the previous administration. And while this administration has taken deliberate action to curb efforts like Operation Choke Point, we must remain vigilant for similar efforts in the future. And in full disclosure, I'm a car dealer, and I'm a, I'm a, uh, I've been on the receiving end of Operation Choke Point, so I know what it does. So, uh, uh, Mr. Secretary, I know you and I share Mr. Cooper as a dear friend, so tell him hi. Thank you for being here. I'd like to ask a question to you. Uh, I introduced, as you know, H.R. 3626, the Bank Service Company Examination uh, Coordination Act, and this bill will enhance state and federal regulators' ability to coordinate examinations and share information on banks' technology vendors in an effective and efficient manner. So my question would be, can you explain how authorizing state regular, uh, regulators to examine third-party technology service providers is beneficial, and uh, how that uh, could avoid duplicate examinations and reduce regulatory burden? Yes, thank you very much, sir. I will give Mr. Cooper your best the next time I see him, uh, which will be in a couple of weeks. Uh, your bill, uh, we, we applaud you for introducing it. It would be, crit it is critically important um, to making the financial services regulation system uh, more efficient. Um, as I mentioned throughout, one of my themes is we're out there every day as state regulators doing this work, examining these third-party services providers, many of which are money service businesses and uh, new fintech innovators. And for us not to be able to communicate freely with our federal counterparts, uh, for them to know what we're doing and for us to know what they're doing, just results in more examinations, more work, more regulatory burden that seems unnecessary because it's just duplicative at that point in time. So the simple change that your bill, the simple common sense change that your bill would provide could greatly impact uh, a reduction in regulatory burden. Okay, I have another question for you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, your testimony references Vision 2020, uh, a series of initiatives to modernize state regulation of non-banks. So I would ask you, can you briefly describe this initiative and how it will address re or, or de-risking and what components of Vision 2020 might be applied to make federal supervision even more efficient? Well, one of, the, one of our pillars is, you know, coordinating better with our federal counterparts. Um, we're listening to our uh, non-bank uh, fintech uh, companies that we regulate more closely through an advisory panel that will tell us what their pressure points are so we can better respond. Um, one of our pillars is to harmonize state laws as much as possible so that fintech innovators know the rules of the road, know what to expect from a, federal re uh, from a state regulator, know what to expect from a state exam. Uh, how do state examiners, how we work together as state examiners is another focus of our Vision 2020 initiative. And quite frankly, um, making sure that the banking system is available to all of these new companies is another uh, pillar of our Vision 2020. And to that extent, we have to start having honest conversations with our bank, uh, with the banks that we supervise. Again, we touch 78% of every bank in America, making sure that they understand um, what they need to do. They have an obligation to, to mitigate their risk. We've given them tools to better understand that and to understand that at least from the perspective of state regulators, there's no taboo categories. You're entitled to bank any lawful business that you want to bank understand the risk of doing that, use the tools that we've given you, and hopefully that is a pathway that state regulators can use to, uh, to attack this de-risking phenomenon. Thank you for that testimony. Uh, my last uh, question would be to you, Mr. Oxman. Uh, Operation Choke Point may be one of the most abusive government overreaches in our nation's history. Uh, as a business owner myself for almost 50 years, uh, it's unconscionable that a federal agency could so recklessly affect the livelihoods of so many law-abiding citizens and businesses. So how do we prevent future overreach from the executive branch and should the roles of the agency uh, and of Congress be in that prevention? Uh, I think, Congressman, you're absolutely right in characterizing this overreach as harmful to our economy. Uh, it's harmful to American business. And our concern going forward is we saw Operation Choke Point come up during the prior administration, but as you noted, there is a risk going forward next year 
five years from now, 10 years from now, that agencies will start this back up again. So I think the proper role of Congress mm -hmm. is to pass legislation like uh, we've talked about today, H.R. 2706, make sure federal agencies, federal law enforcement understand that Operation Choke Point is not the law of the land and they are not to act as policymakers. It's Congress's decision what merchant activities are legal and what aren't and regulators and law enforcement should not be using Operation Choke Point as a policy-making activity. It's wrong, and Congress needs to stop it. Thank you for your testimony. Gentlemen, time has